So in this segment, we're going to be talking a bit about Jeremy Corbyn's statements regarding Ireland kind of Brexit making a case for a united Ireland far stronger. And, you know, him saying um, Ireland is looking stronger and a self-looking economic entity, because obviously trade between Northern Ireland and, you know, Ireland have gone up um, dramatically thanks to Brexit, because they can't, you know, the people of Northern Ireland can't get the goods in from GB, so they've sourced, they're sourcing them from Ireland, and it makes it far more um, sort of entangled economically, far more than it was before anyways. So Mr Corbyn said, in a way, the issue of the debate over Brexit, etc., which I've, no, I've never seen anyone write, etc., like that, have meant that the island of Ireland as a whole has become stronger, self-looking economic entity than it was and I think that's quite significant and it's quite important. You know, Jeremy Corbyn, a person who supports um, Irish independence, I mean, sorry, Irish unification even, um, it would make sense he would say this, but I've looked um, in another article and, it, you know, we've covered this a lot where, you know, trade between the Northern Ireland and Ireland has gone up dramatically and it does make a case economically for a united Ireland. Mr Corbyn, who has been a long-term supporter of a United Ireland, said he was watching the debate around partition and the potential reunification very closely indeed. You know, it required the Tory government to do a border poll. Um, so we'll see, but um, it's possible, you know, considering they're called the Conservative and Unionist Party, though, might not go down the best, but they did sacrifice Northern Ireland to get their Brexit deal anyways. So um, this is an article from the Irish Times that says Brexit has significantly altered Irish freight traffic. Um, so if we go into the bits of the article, which is that post-Brexit trade restrictions have significantly, significantly altered freight traffic between the Republic of Ireland and Britain and sparked a steep rise in volumes to and from Ireland and other European members, a government agency report noted on Thursday. You know, Britain is being bypassed here. So-called roll-on, roll-off traffic between Irish and British ports was 20% lower, which is something we've spoken about in the past as well. But um, the introduction of checks on some goods since Britain left the EU's trading orbit um, has cut imports from Britain by 35% in the first five months. So that's from, I believe that's from Northern Ireland, the numbers have dropped. You know, uh, imports from, sorry, exports from GB to NI have dropped by, I think that's around 35%, which is crazy. Um, and if we actually look at the the kind of traffic, the kind of transport, we've got to remember that typically you'd have goods going from the United Kingdom into Northern Ireland. Well, that can't happen because there is a, technically there's a border in the Irish Sea, a trade border, where, you know, goods are going to have to get checked. So that'll be goods going to um, wherever any of these places are, Belfast, Bangor. Um, I'm going to mispronounce a lot of these. So goods going from, say, um, Port Patrick into Bangor or Belfast will get checked, whereas goods going from um, Dundalk into, say, Newry or Dundalk into any of these border towns will not get checked because Northern Ireland is part of the EU single market uh, for goods and not part of GBs. That's the main problem here. And when they talk about row road traffic what they or, or transport even, they mean sort of goods that might go from, say, Dublin or across the UK sort of going through here this way this is something someone explained to me i appreciate that person a lot if they do watch this video um you know who you are and i'll might message you later well you'll see this video in the future but not the point so you know goods would go through here into uh wales through wales if you're following the mouse towards oxford potentially into london and then towards the dover calais crossing which is where the hell is it somewhere yeah it's around here so that's the old method so they'll go cut across there the land bridge right now what these drivers and what these ferries do they just go around oh, they go around the uk so they'll go this way through the water um go all the way around and they might end up at say calais or they could go to um brest or to saint malo or they could go to say portugal instead um so they might go south so maybe the old route was they go to france first they go to france first they drive down but now they can go directly to um bilbao it's Bilbao on the port. I'm going to say that's on the port. Yeah, Bilbao, uh, Hijon. I recognise some of these places on football. Um, Deportivo, La Coruña, and any of these other places. Maybe that's what they did originally, but what it means is no longer is there Irish traffic going through, but also the fact that, you know, trade between GB and NI has gone down dramatically and they're getting a lot more of their goods from Ireland. You know, trade going this way rather than going this way. I can't do arrows, unfortunately. 
but if you can follow the mouse, you know, going from trade going from GB to NI has been reduced dramatically, and that's been replaced by Irish goods. They might not get the exact same thing that they want, but um, if these numbers are accurate, you know, Jeremy Corbyn's statement is right that Ireland is looking far more self-sufficient. Ireland kind of without trying to get shot here, sort of Northern Ireland and the and Ireland itself are looking far more self-sufficient than, um, you know, sort of pre-Brexit, where, you know, Northern Ireland was reliant on GB for goods. Now it's far more reliant on Ireland, you know, it's something on its own land. You know, I'm not going to hide the fact that I am for Irish unification. If that's what the people of Ireland want, you know, Northern Ireland, if they want unification, then so be it. You know, I'm not going to stand in their way. Um... I don't see the point of it. If people want national self-determination, don't stop them because it just creates more resentment. Um, especially since, you know, the EU have put massive amounts of funds, and I think even the Yanks have, into Ireland, whilst Northern Ireland has struggled massively because the UK won't fund it as much. So um, unification might help the people of Northern Ireland. Who knows? Um, anyways, you know, Jeremy Corbyn is right, though. You know, Brexit has helped the unification of Ireland. I don't know if he, you know, he's a guy who does support Brexit, I think, in his heart of hearts. I do wonder if he always intended for Brexit to help the Irish independence question, or is it just a side effect of Boris Johnson's Brexit? I would say it's more a side effect of Boris Johnson's Brexit, but um, yeah, you know, he's correct in this statement, and um, he's a guy a lot of people dislike, but. On this one, you're going to struggle to argue against him. So we'll leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.